So there are three new quests this update, two of which are tutorials of uh, how heroes work, so I guess I'll run through them real quick. Who knows, maybe it could be, like, sneakily hard. Very easy side quest, very. GG. Let's do the final quest, y'all. Mold Madness is the newest experimental quest. If anyone remembers BTD5, this was in it. And that was very short. This is di different, see? We have 50k cash and we have 5 rounds instead of 1. BT5 only had one wave of Moabs, but this time, let's see what we can do to win. To challenge myself, I'm also going to turn off Monkey Knowledge, but honestly, that will probably still be very easy. So let me try to find a clean solution here. First off, I'm going to Greed. I'm going to see if this works. Can I make 50% more cash from the Balloon Pops? And I'm going to do a uh, Ground Zero. That worked in BT5, I believe. So why doesn't it work now? Okay, there's space. There's space. Let me just go for all the instant nukes. So let's also go for Robo Monkey. First in strong. And this can hold off until I get my uh, round zero to nuke everything. So uh, this, two, three, zero. Oh, oh, this is not in Monkey Time range. Oh, crap. Okay, now we're making more money. I don't even have to use round zero, actually. All right. It's only fitting that with more balloon to be six, they have more rounds, and so maybe they should have not called it Molt, molt Madness. They should have called it something else. I, although I guess these are Molt Class balloons. But before, Molt man, Madness just meant Moabs only. This one we absolutely have to use Ground Zero for, so let me wait. Oh, oh, can we also do this? Rubber to Gold. If I'm not mistaken, does that not also increase the cash per pop if you one-shot them? I want to say that would work. I think after we nuke, we should definitely get some permanent stuff, so wait for it. Now. There we go. Actually, let's go for Solver. Sure, sure, sure. I was thinking about that. Anything that with High Pierce, like even Glavler 2, will probably shine on Mold Madness here. Solver definitely, though. Pretty much deals with infinite stuff. Alright, Camo, I'll do that. Tech Terror now. I hope that's not too late. Uh, we're holding, we're holding, we're holding. Right, I have my uh, tech tier coming up very soon. I'll just use it to move him back. And there is round three. Round four is probably ZMGs, I would assume, right? Waiting. Yep, there it is. There it is. So is it is it also 50 ZMGs in a round? Let's see. I think it is. It just doesn't keep... It just does not end. Anyways, uh, let's just hover over the solver to show you what we're looking at. Uh, just a casual, I don't know, 15,000 damage per second. When everything pops to a Moab. Fair and balanced. Star Bomber now as well. I kind of just want to use Star Bomber now. Or at least Tech Tier. Let's use it. 3, 2, 1. $120,000 in one, one fell swoop. And it, let me guess. It's also 50 bads of round 5. Not gonna lie. This this this, this uh, quest is pretty fun. At least for trying completely random stuff. Or crazy stuff. Should we just see if Supermines works? Sure. Let me remove this. Let's see if Zero Mines works. I can't place it under both villages, so it'll have to be... Uh... Actually, let me just sell the Tech Terror. I don't want it. I don't want to play with you anymore. I want to play with you. This plus Overclock plus Tier 4 out buff. Can that solo 50 bads? Most... Uh, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Just full DPS on the Zero Mines. In fact, we'll even do uh, Call to Arms if the money's there. I could probably buy a mid-round given how much money we're making. I'm looking and the money doesn't seem to be that much reduced for popping... <laughs> Bads, no. Nope. Supermines can indeed solo. These are probably the unbuffed bads as well, like, with round 1 scaling, so they're slow speed. They're normal HP. It's like battles too, yeah. When your opponent sends infinite bads, but you still beat it. Easy, but fun. Because this was no no, no monkey knowledge, mind you. No monkey knowledge. Easy peasy, as they say. Alright, let me do one quick, one more quick run here. Let me see how much money I can make. Turning on a monkey launch because this time I want I want a really, really big, big number. I have an idea in mind. Can I start with this? Right off the bat. No, I'm $3,000 short. So here's what I'm gonna try this time. Let's just beat the mobs normally. For round one, because I can't buy a big trap for round one. We'll do out buff. And deep breath. I think that's enough, right? And unfortunately, I double checked and uh, Dragon's Breath got nerfed. Those bastards at NK. I'm kidding. But they nerfed its attack rate, so that might be a reason why it is not doing so hot. Alright, just 
Just some quick temporary defense. I don't know. Ring of Fire. Again, yeah, just group damage is good, so... Uh, that ought to be Balloon Zone. In fact, I'll put this on strong. Yes, I am... I will admit it is very scuffed. Now, can I sell everything to afford Big Trap this round? Except for this, because I need the combo. Sell, sell. Sell. Nice. Oh, wait, I also need to go for Robert Gold, though. Like, before it gets into the Big Trap. Because that will make even more money. I need to make $2,000. Any time now. Alright, got it, got it, got it. Now we should be making bank. 11,000, see that? 11k. 14k. Okay, let's make sure everything gets rubber to golded, so last on this one too. Sheesh. Another one? Another one. We'll just cross path. And another one. And another. Let's go for banana central as well. This is ridiculous. Now I need DT popping. Hang on. So I need to go for relentless, I believe. Stuff to stun, slow him down. So let's see if this does anything. Need to place the trap. Just gotta replace the trap every single time. This is the round that we're gonna make the least money. ZMGs is going to be insane. Please ignore this banana central I got. It's not gonna make the money back. Also, for those wondering, uh, you can't stack the Monkey City buff and the Temple Cash for Pop. That has been tried before. So again, this is the maximum amount of money we're getting from each trap. So. 7,000, 7,000, infinite 7,000s. We're gonna have enough in the tank, right? For all this? Eventually. So, if I'm not misremembering anything, this is probably the most money you can make in this, in this, uh, quest. With the big trap. Just a casual 250,000 and four rounds of, of it dropping it down. In fact, three rounds, actually, because the trap wasn't even used in round one. So, what Paragon can we afford? Probably not not the Ace Paragon, but definitely a good one. We'll sell everything now. 521,000. Can't do Nautic Siege Core, because there's no water. Otherwise, actually, I think I could. <laughs> Come on, NK. Where's the water at? Well, I think the only option then is the Boomerang. That is the most expensive one that we can afford. Okay, sell the Big Trap now. You will be truly missed. Glaive Dominus, and let it rip. 70k of Cash Lighter. Degree 32 only. Now, can the Glaive Lord, or rather, Glaive Paragon, beat 50 bads? Answer it. Uh, no. In an alternate universe where Mold Madness is 100 times harder, no. Alright, that's it though. That's, uh, that's, uh, my quirky solution. 300k cash, cash generated in four rounds. Okay, what else is new this update? Trophy store items. There is a Moab B. Cute skin, but not gonna lie, I saw the teaser of it in their update video, in Nichikui's update video, and it looked kind of awkward. Anyways, we've got new custom avatars, uh, Lunar New Year Banner, very cool. It is indeed that time of year, and Benjamin Mouse Pet, I think that's all there is. This is also a really cool new feature, see this search button? You can now search by, well, can you actually search by the map? Yes, you can, cool. But there's also quick hotkeys so that you can... Pick which ones, show which one's the monkey team, or the collection event, so you don't have to scroll through all of them. Great change. I don't grind much, but I definitely remember having to scroll through every single tab of each page. There's also this. You can do slash black to show the black borders that you got. These are mine so far. Yes, as you can see, I'm not really a grinder. Silver shows the silver, and slash bronze shows the bronze borders. Okay, now let's go back to Sulphur Springs, a uh, hard and poppable. I want to use this last time here to talk about more of the update because usually how it works is that when Ninja Kiwi releases their early update video, they don't show the balance changes or other future plans. But once it's out, which it is right now, you can download it right now. All the info is available on this update, including the plethora of balance changes, which uh, let me just tell you, there's a lot. I'll leave a link to the description in case you're curious to see them after the fact. But I don't want to go over the balance changes for uh, this segment here. Rather, there's a more section that where they talk about the future plans for this game, and if you ask me, their future plans sound very, very exciting, so uh, go ahead and sit back and relax while I go over all of that. Now, before that, um, I just noticed on this map, where are the pre-game road spikes? I know in a problem mode, you only have one life, so they disable mana shield, but they also don't disable road spikes, but I guess that means that the uh, actual exit of this map is, like, really, really far back. 
Because usually the pregame prep road spikes are visible on every map, except maybe minor squad slash like removal stuff at the exit. Let me just test this green blue, for example. Uh, is it gonna hit a road spike? Yes. That is an invisible road spike. Okay, then. Weird. Anyways, uh, before I get to the spicy stuff, uh, let me go over, I guess, the balance changes done to the sub, because I'm doing... Well, at, at this point, it looks like a sub-only run. Just real quick, they shuffled a lot of prices around, so as you can see, Submerger Support is now a lot more expensive, but to make up for that, Reactor is a little bit cheaper. You just have to keep in mind that these are improbable prices, so... It won't be this bad in, like, Chimps mode. Chimp poppable in the real game you win. Also, I think Ballistic Missiles are a little bit cheaper now by just $50. And right, now going for a 402 sub is a mistake, because they change it so that you don't need the full airburst cross path to get the attack speed bonus, because right now, well, cross pathing the sub will get you benefits. 410, for example, will give you extra pierce, along with 420 and 402 last update, but now they make it so that you don't require the second tiers of each of them, because thematically it doesn't make sense, because heat tips doesn't give more pierce, so why would it- why should it give more pierce on reactor? It makes sense, probably should have done this from the start, but it's better late than never to right a wrong, you know what I mean? Anyways, let's kill this bee real quick. Okay, so first things first, there is a new hero coming, eventually, and the next hero will still apparently be coming in the first half of the year, so before July, and it's a jetpack themed hero with multiple mobility upgrades, switching between weapon types, bouncy projectiles because they are so much fun. So I guess think Juggernaut bouncing off walls or maybe Glaive Ricochet, I don't know, maybe both. But yeah, and also synergies with Flying Monkey, so kind of like Etienne if Etienne was a support hero. Definitely looking forward to that. It feels like with the description of that hero, it sounds very complicated, but as they promised when Corvus came out, they said the next couple heroes would be uh, much more simple in nature, so... Uh, here's hoping it doesn't require, like, uh, your entire attention span. Moving on, we have a new Monkey Tower coming up soon. Arguably even more exciting than the hero, if you ask me. This one comes out in the middle of the summer this year. And this one's going to be another Water Tower, but non-military. Every time we'd see fan art in this direction, we buy our tongues, but yes, from the depths of Monk Lantis. Sea Monkey, maybe? Who knows what they're stirring up, but quick. Go go search right now of all the water-based monkey fan art slash tower ideas that people post on the internet and come back to me with your results. Chances are that tower is going to be similar to one of those ideas. I'm not going to lie though, I didn't think we'd get a, t a new tower this soon considering we just got Beast Handler last year. Yeah, in other news, they're also working on a new way to tackle bosses, aka with teams. Rather, not co-op, but... And bo a boss rush event where aggregate play against the boss is the way to succeed. No idea what, like, exactly that's supposed to mean. Other than, like, what, you can play the first 20 rounds of boss and then hand off to someone else? That sounds kind of weird, but I guess only time will tell what that actually means. And as a creator, I will have to say that this next section is what I'm most excited about. They're working on a game editor. Not just a map editor, in fact, they're building upon it. They're hoping to deliver in the last quarter of the year. A fully functional game editor with the ability to change stats, damage types, projectiles on monkeys, have more choices of round sets, and have sandbox tools that allows the creation of new game modes like progressive gun game or rouge-like upgrade choices. What the hell is going on? We're in Fortnite Creative to BT6. I think this feature right here though is what's going to open the key to just so many more possibilities with the game. That's why I'm so excited for it. Think about mods that people already create for this game, but the fact that now the entire community has access to that. And think of how many more things can be can be done. If you follow my other channels recently, you might know that I've been dabbling in actually some other games that are not just balloons, and after taking a deeper dive into those games, well like Geometry Dash for example, their level editor is actually insane with the amount of customi customization you can do. Like, to the point where it doesn't even feel like you're playing that game anymore. You can literally make a completely different game within their level editor. Which I would assume is one of the reasons why that game is so successful. Hype for that, though. And last section, uh, I just wanted to talk about the last sentence here. Where it says that they're going to be working on the Balloonspedia to help new players. A.K.A. like, specific stats. Because right now, if you want to find those resources, you have to either get them through, well, me or... Google them, wiki them, 
As of right now, there's no way in-game to know exactly what a Terry does unless you sandbox test it. But even then, you don't get the full picture. Definitely looking forward to that. And um, I'm not sure what this section means. Framing out periodic Legends content drops for players looking for even more challenges. I assume this means like specific rewards for like rewarding very, very high level play. That's what I'm assuming. And I'm assuming it's also it might be a limited time. I don't know. Just a guess. Anyways, looks like subs only beat in problem mode very easily. Note, I haven't even used a brick ability in the entire game. Once again, there are so many more changes to this update that I've not yet gone over, so make sure to either check it out if you want to take a read of the patch notes in the description, or, uh, hang on, I'm trolling here. I'll first write that. But yeah, or subscribe to uh, watch specific showcases of said bounce features coming soon. Thanks for watching, and again, before you go, if you're looking for more content to binge to, check out Ice of Extras. Lots of weird balloons ideas there that you don't see on this channel, and also other games, and of course Twitch. Catch me live if you can. Alright, that's it, see ya.